had to take a little intermission. I don't understand how people can go on the Joe Rogan podcast, be there for three hours, and not have to pee. No. It just they makes no sense to me. have just chosen to live a life celibate of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it. Um, well, yeah, we've made our way to Winnipeg here. So we're matchmaking today. But I just want to take a moment to appreciate the honeymoon stage that Winnipeg is finding themselves in right now. It's just been one of those situations where it's like for so long, it just seemed like, no, that would never happen. Ah, I'm sure yeah. that, that that would never work. But it actually happened. Like Pierre-Luc Dubois is a Winnipeg Jet and he was traded for Patrick Laine. This That's... is the timeline we're living in. Like, how is that real? It's like something that you, right, concoct on. Uh, That's like an EA Sports NHL trade. Exactly, right? And the other thing, I think that really is an inspiration, at least in my eyes, for this whole segment of this Valentine's Day theme is like, how often do you pick uh, a trade out or do you scheme a trade where, trade where it's like, okay, well, this team's looking for this and that team's looking for that. So they should do a trade, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and how many times can you come up with all these different hypotheticals that just never happen in the same one? It's like, well, okay, it's too good to be true. So if it hasn't happened already, it's probably not going to exactly, happen. And yeah. yet, boom, all of a sudden, like the greatest hypothetical swap that almost never happens in the league happened. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, absolutely wild. I, I still can't believe it. So I think... Uh, my motivation was low to come up with some really spicy matchmaking for the Jets just because, like, just just appreciate what you got. Like, I, I still can't believe that it happened, and I just couldn't think of a more perfect fit for the Jets than Dubois. Um, I think he changes their whole identity as a team in, mm. a, in a drastically, like, just the way, okay, that's maybe a little bit extreme. He changes the way that their whole forward group feels hmm. like the line they swap for him in a way that I think is going to be really positive for this team hmm. moving forward. So uh, that said, do you have anyone when you look around that you'd like to maybe set up right here with so the Jets? So I think, I think it's pretty um, typical to look at the Jets defense and be like, that's the area that they need upgraded. Now, one thing I think that uh, changes, because I'm actually not going to pick a defenseman. Um, one thing that changes, I think the acquisition of Dubois, a guy who plays both ends of the ice quite well, I think that is a defensive acquisition in yeah. a sense. Um, and contrasting that to Patrick Laine, and even though he paired well with Shifley and Wheeler on the top line, there was a liability. It was better for him, but it wasn't better for the team as a whole. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so what Dubois can do on both ends of the ice is going to be really good. And so instead of looking for a defenseman that I think is available, I'm actually going right back to that second line right wing that they lost okay and finding someone that i think and i believe is really attainable now mm. um it looks like some of the uh teams that i'm feasting on here uh are ones that are already out early right so i've already picked anaheim for a candidate to trade to with edmonton because anaheim already looks out of it and i don't think we expected them to be um doing really any better than they are. Mm -hmm. And at this point in the season, it's really hard to determine who's eliminated or who's not going to be contending for a playoff spot because things are so tight. And especially with the shortened season, there's this anything can happen kind of attitude with some of the teams. Now, Anaheim, I think is without that right now. And I think they've got a lot of really good young pieces. So there could be some incentive to hold on to these players. Um, that I've mentioned, Josh Manson being one, and this other one for the Winnipeg Jets, I think is a perfect pick, and that's Ricard Raquel, okay? Now, that might not be the sexiest pick for some people. That might seem like a very 2008 pick, uh, sorry, 2018 pick <laughs> yes, for, for some people, but um, honestly, I believe that if Ricard Raquel is made available, because guys like Manson with one year left, Raquel also has one year remaining after mm -hmm. this. Remember, it's a flat cap, so having that cost control is a really, really important element, mm. and um, I think that 
having so you're saying as opposed to going for a rental going for a guy who has another year yes yeah. yes and i think from an anaheim perspective they're like okay we like to have these players but what's the likelihood that they're going to resign with, with us two years from now or like two summers from now right and so i think that's got to be kind of in the back of their mind and we've seen this with other players um where blake coleman and barclay goodrow both go to t- Tampa Bay each for first round picks plus mm-hmm. right and these aren't guys who they're definitely NHLers right but I don't think most people ex- expected that cost to be no. there so I think there's going to be a really right nice return for Anaheim that will set them up it might sound a little painful for some Jets viewers but let me tell you exactly why Ricard Raquel okay so um as I mentioned the defense would be maybe an option to upgrade, but I think that Dubois really changes um, that, and this whole offense can be um, the best form of defense. Um, maybe I'm speaking out of two sides of my mouth throughout the podcast, but I think that can really be true. Now, Ricardo Kell is a right-hand shot, and Ehlers is a left-hand shot, mm. and if you put, say, a Dubois or Shifley in the middle of that on a second pairing... Uh, or a second line, I think that that could be really, really potent. Like, um, I think that works out really, really well. And I know Ricard Vakel's numbers have slumped uh, the last years, but we're going to talk about those numbers for just a brief moment. And I think I can articulate some points that can get you to buy into this idea. The other thing that's really cool, Ehlers can and likes to play on the off wing occasionally, and so does Ricard Raquel. Mm. So they can both play off wings. Um, and maybe that's a really good power play uh, option that they can have, or maybe one of them can play the high slot uh, sort of option there. And like I mentioned, the cost and the control. So um, while you're getting ready to yeah. share some of those numbers, something that I really like about where you're going with this uh, is how important it is in this league uh, to buy low on mm. players. And I think that this would be the time to buy low on Ricard Raquel. I think he's a player who, and this may be some of the stuff you're going to talk about, but I, I think he's a player who is at his best when he's playing with really good players. And Ryan Getzlaff is not the player who he used to be. No, um, He, Raquel... I think struggles when he really has to kind of create some of his own offense. Hmm. That's not his identity as a player. And when you imagine like just perfectly crafting a line, you have Ehlers, who is an elite play driver. You have Dubois, who is an incredible, creative, dynamic playmaker who can also finish. He can be at the front of the net. There's there's no part of the ice he has to avoid, right? He can take the puck anywhere and disperse it, you know, uh, on a whim. And so I think that is the dream scenario for yeah. uh, for a guy like Raquel to flourish and hopefully bounce back. So uh, I guess why don't you talk a bit about that idea of him bouncing back and why that might be. Right. So I'll just talk about some of his numbers here. And I'm going to contrast this to some players who are inevitably going to have to go the other way. That's just the way it is. You To get value, you've got to give up some value. Okay. Um, and so um, when I'm looking at his best two seasons now this is uh 2018 or sorry 2017 and 2018 which may feel to some of us an eternity ago but his best numbers he got 51 points in one season and 69 points in another season and um he's got 30 goals multiple Mm -hmm. occasions as well which i think is is really really good um And yeah, he even got some Lady Bing votes. So um, like he's a really disciplined player, which I think that narrative of uh, the Jets being a really penalized team is has gone away. But like he's not going to be uh, a liability for um, putting your team down chances, right, for for a PK. And so, um, yeah, he's he's really good in that aspect. He's got a career shooting of 11.5%, which is pretty good, especially considering the last couple years when Anaheim's really made this precipitous drop from, now this might shock you, but in um, when Raquel's put up his best numbers in uh, 16, 17, and 18, Anaheim was first in the Pacific, first in the Pacific, and third in the Pacific. So like (laughs) hockey changes really fast, but he was putting up good numbers. on good teams and 
he was shooting about 18, 14, 12% there. And the last couple of years playing on a team that's really almost been gutted or has decayed. Um, he's been shooting kind of around uh, like uh, six and eight percent, which is low for him. And also because he's been asked to drive so much offense, he's just volume shooting and mm -hmm. volume shooting. And so there aren't enough people to make plays to or not enough people to help generate goals. So he's been asked to shoulder a lot of that. And he's struggled um, at the start of this year. He gets good time on ice. He gets about 18 minutes um, a night. And the good part is he makes 3.78 million. I'm rounding 3.78 million for this year and next That's year. That's crazy. Yeah. And so, um, like I mentioned in 16, he had, uh, 20 goals and in 17, he had 33 goals and in 18, he had 34 goals. And in each of those, um, he hadn't quite played 82 games either. So there, um, if you extrapolate those numbers for points per season, um, then those can be even higher with uh, with some luck and some health. So now it comes the question, who's going the other way? And this might be tough for some people who may view this as a fan favorite. And uh, I'm willing to take a bit of blow for this, but I think uh, Perot makes the most sense cap wise to go back the other way. He makes 4.1 million and I know he does a lot. Some people think that he's super valuable, shorthanded. He's got a motor that uh, just keeps running and that's good. Um, and I think sometimes his motor keeps turning and turning and it can sometimes mean he's moving too fast to make the right play or he might be overzealous in making a, a check and there can be some defensive liability there. Now, I understand he's got a, a good role, he's a role player, but he's making 4.1 mil, and those same years where Ricard, Raquel had his best statistical seasons, so did Matthew Perot, and he got uh, 44 points and 45 points were his career highs, okay? And again, just a reminder that Ricard Raquel had 51 and 69, so there's mm. clearly an improvement there. Um, there's offensive prowess, and we talked about the chemistry before between Dubois and Ehlers. I think that's totally there. Maybe a hiccup could be uh, that Perot's got a five-team no-trade list. However, uh, Perot previously played for Anaheim, where he did have his statistically best career season. So, um, yeah, you can maybe hope for um, him looking at a place like Ottawa, Detroit, Buffalo, maybe being on his no trade list, something like that, right? So then there's already a probability that Anaheim be a could be open. New Jersey, right? These days, <laughs> if they slumped, I have a hard time. How long has it been since they've played? That's just true. The COVID situation, that true. franchise is just in a little bit of trouble. As yeah, well. yeah. They they looked good for a bit, but yeah. that's maybe. A for a different day yeah, as well. For sure. Yeah. 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 Um, and of course, we're doing Canadian League, so how can you not pay attention to only things north of the border, uh, too? Yeah. But yeah, like, um, I think that this is an excellent fit. Now, Pro might hurt, um, but cap wise, like I said, he makes 4.1, Raquel makes uh, 3.78, but as much as it might pain Jets, you're going to need to add to that, okay? Um, Raquel is a good player, guys, that score 30 goals. Um, don't grow on trees. And I think 30 goals in this era, or at least in the last couple of years that we've seen, has been a lot more like the 40 goal scores that we've expected mm -hmm. um, in years past. So 30 goals is actually a lot nowadays for uh, players. So what I see is uh, something like Perot and then either a Veselainen or Gustafsson. Now, um, it's nice to have Gustafsson and Raquel on the same team. There's a bit of a Swedish connection there, maybe incentivizing, but I think Gustafsson is worth more. So I see Perot, Gustafsson, a first, and possibly even Declan Chisholm. Because remember, he's signed for one more year after this. So um, that is a really big uh, factor that we need to consider. This isn't just a rental. This mm -hmm. is a player that you're retaining for some time. So that means value has to go the other way and you have to convince Anaheim who is not totally at rock bottom to part with a guy who's turning 28 this year only. Yeah, so and been a huge part of their identity for a long time. Exactly. Just so. a, a quick note. Um, calculations have been done and interestingly enough, a player, um, 
basically I believe this study was kind of done by comparing like you sort of assign a role to a player like uh, second line offensive wing or second line defensive you know you assign all these roles and um, they've gone back year by year and looked at uh, trades and kind of the return that was given back and it's hard to approximate value at the time right but that was what was uh, the attempt and players are at their most valuable in terms of the most they return they fetch in a trade uh, in the state Raquel would be now where they have like where they're um, a, a trade deadline move or close to uh, who's not a just a rent for the rest of the season but one year left yeah definitely when you get when they have more contract left the value drops a little bit um, and when they have less contract left the value drops a bit as well so it, it, I agree that it would be a pretty steep cost. Yeah. I do think that there's no way Shovel Day off trades his first again. I think mm -hmm. he just, I think he probably just couldn't stomach that anymore. But um, perhaps there is Perfetti maybe coming up on a ELC mm -hmm. and it, Roslovic's also looked kind of decent in Columbus. So yeah. that's maybe I bites just, a bit. I wouldn't be surprised um, but, if Anaheim asks for a first if these negotiate in these imaginary negotiations. And he comes back, uh, Chevy comes back with, say, like uh, a second, another later round pick and like take your pick of this group of prospects. Mm. Or so, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as opposed to like making up a bit of that value instead of I wouldn't I personally wouldn't. I could be wrong, but right. um, yeah. yeah, I just think that uh, it's hard to trade as many first round picks as they have in not super recent history, but medium to short-term history and and be successful Fair. so that's just my gut feel but okay yeah yeah that's cool that's cool um and yeah for those of you who are like no defense is the clearest need even if they made a uh, move for raquel uh, some of what you're taking off the roster i think even with a quarantine period um you is definitely easy for jets to do better than tread uh, water with the addition of Dubois already yeah. playing. If they had to wait a couple weeks for Raquel to quarantine, cross the border, um, I think that is totally worth it personally. And what this actually does, because Raquel makes less than Perot, is that if you in, are insisting, insisting that there needs to be another defenseman added, um, then what could happen is maybe a guy like um, Forbert or Beaulieu, who's making a little bit of money, he could maybe go with some more draft capital or whatever needs to be added to get a guy like Vince Dunn possibly from the Blues has been rumored on the mm. the way out he's controlled these in RFA coming up so um with little on LTIR then there's going to be enough cushion to you're saving money with Raquel and maybe a guy like uh Gustafson or Vestlinen coming off your taxi squad maybe you go down a player and then if you ship out Bolu or For Forbert who each make about um, 1.4 and 1 million respectively, then you've got a little bit of wigger, wiggle room to get uh, a lower echelon defenseman that might help, uh, might be a slight bump or at least mm. be younger and under control um, yeah. for this team. So yeah. so there, there are other iterations and possibilities. Yeah. Um, it clears cap for, for them to use LTIR better right. as well. So yeah. uh, that's important to yeah. note. 